Hi, I'm Michaela, an elementary instructor with TechWise Academy. Today we're going to be using Scratch Junior. Scratch Junior is a free coding app that combines coding and creativity. It can be used to create lots of different animations, different games, lots of stories. It can be used for a lot of different things. Today we're going to be talking about sending messages or sending letters and why that's helpful and how we do that and kind of what that looks like when we code it. I also have mouse and bot with me today. They're going to do a quick little skit to help us kind of understand messages, kind of in a unplugged little skit first. So I also have my green flag, my blue message, and my red message. So I would like for when I press the green flag, I would like mouse to send a blue message to bot. So mouse, I have pressed the green flag. Mouse, hey, send this off to coding bot. Okay, hey bot, you've gotten a blue message. Bot is going to read that message and says, oh, every time I get this blue message, I need to move up a space, up. And if I were to press my green flag again, green flag. Mouse will send a blue message again and says, hey, bot, you've gotten another blue message. Bot will read it and say, oh, I have to move up a space. Perfect. And bot would do that. This time I want mouse to send a red message and I don't want it to do it when I press the green flag. I want mouse to do it when I tap on it. So, hey, mouse, you're going to wait until I have tapped or clicked on you and then you're going to send a red message to bot, please. So I have tapped on you. Please send this red message off to bot. Here, bot, now you have a red message. Bot would read it and say, oh, now I need to move to the left every time I get a red message. Boop. If I tapped on mouse again, I could do that. Mouse will send another red message. Coding bot will get the message and it'll move over to the left again. Perfect, so if I jump over into Scratch Junior, we could do the exact same thing with our messages on Scratch Junior. So instead of mouse and bot, I have tick and pig. So if I were to go to the green flag, I could have tick send a, we're gonna do a orange message. And this is the sending one. This is the one where the message is closed. They are sending it off or sending the letter off. Well, somebody needs to read that letter and do what it says. That's going to be pig. So pig is going to get the, pig is going to wait until they've gotten the orange letter. And let's have pig move in a circle. So I will change that and then I'll end the code. So when I press the green flag, tick will not move, but tick will send a letter off to pig. And there's no like little animation, there's no letter being sent. It kind of just happens in the background. So when I press the green flag, tick will not move, but It'll send an orange message and pig will do a full circle. Perfect. That is should that's what should have happened. A common error might happen. So if I had sent a yellow message here, I clicked the little down arrow. And if I had sent a yellow message, well, pig's waiting for an orange message. So pig will not turn because a yellow message was sent, but pig is waiting for an orange message. So that might be a common error that we might run into. I'm gonna turn this back to orange. Another fun feature is that I could have Tick send out another orange message. And then I'm going to end the code. Pig can, oh, I want Pig to get another orange message. And I will have Pig move to the right. Let's have Pig move three steps to the right and then I could end the code nice and neat. This way, pig will move pig will move to the right and spin at the same time. Perfect. And that's kind of how that worked. If I had pig move a little bit longer, I think that might have been a little bit more smoother. Perfect. I can also have tick send more messages. I could have tick send, I'm going to actually delete this line of code and this line of code. I could have Tick send out different messages. So I'm going to tap on Tick and I could have Tick send a, let's do a purple message. Then I'll end that code. And then Pig will get the purple message. So when 
pick gets the purple message, we will have we will have pig jump and end the code nice and neat. So now we only see that pig spun, and that's because I pressed on the green flag. If I tap on tick, then tick will send the purple message. So every time I click on tick, the pig will jump. You do not need to use just actions for this. You can use hide blocks. So I will go ahead and have tick send another message and we'll have this message be green. And so tick right now is only sending messages. We could add other code to this. So if I want tick to say hi, I could do that before ending my code. So now when I press the green flag, we'll send an orange message and we will send a green message at the same time. And pig, pig needs to get the green message. So we will have pig receive the green message and this time instead of using an action we'll have pig hide oh i want this one we'll have pig hide and then we can have them wait i'm going to shorten this time to be about let's do four and then we could have pig show back up and then we could end the code so we can do more with messages they don't have to just be our movement blocks so if i do that Pig did show itself and hide itself, and then Tick did say hi. Perfect. That is exactly what should have happened with that. So broadcasting messages is a great way to communicate between different sprites or different characters, how we can get a little bit more control in our games or stories. I personally like to have my, my games with a little bit more control. So for example, if I was making a maze, I have some arrows that are already here. So if I added this one, maybe I have a maze background and maybe I want pig to go through the maze. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete pig's code for just a second. I'd also like to delete tick's code just so that I can keep it nice and clean. So this time, let's say maybe I had a maze. Maybe this is my maze and I wanted the pig to go through the maze. Well, I want to be able to control the pig. I want to be able to move kind of like a video game. So if I did this, I would have my green message. So when I press the green flag, down arrow will send a green message just because I have it green right now. And it helps me stay a little bit organized. And then this time pig will get this message and pig will wait until the green message has arrived and pig will move down because the arrow is pointing down. So it makes sense in my mind to have t pig do that. So now every time I do that, I could do that. But I kind of like it a little bit better when I tap on the arrow. So it makes it a little bit more like a video game. So I'm gonna change this a little bit and then put a tap on it. So now every time I tap the down key or the down arrow, pig will actually move down. I've done that for right and left because if I tap on it and pig goes all the same ways, that doesn't give me the control through the maze that I would like to have. So I would go through and add another one. This time I'll have up and I would put it somewhere over here. And I would do when I tap on it, please send a red message and I can end that code and pig would get the red message. So when I get the red message, I will move up one space or more if you desired. I'm just going to do one for right now. So now I could go through the maze with a little bit more control than just clicking on it or clicking and going through the maze like that. And I could go through and do right and left arrows. So that way I feel like I'm actually going through the maze as opposed to just kind of animating it to go through the maze. So that was a little bit about messages, sending messages, receiving messages. Try it out. There's lots of things that you could do with Scratch Junior as regards to sending messages. Try it out. Have some fun and see what awesome things that you can create. Bye.